And our next topic, enterprise risk management. For that, I'd like to call upon stage Mr. Anil Matthew. Mr. Anil Matthew is President, Public Policy Advocacy, ESG, Engagements, and Chief Risk Officer. He also heads Corporate Communication and Business Transformation, being the head of Public Policy Advocacy, he works with senior government officials in Delhi and other state headquarters on various trade and non-trade related policy matters. Mr. Anil has been in metal industry for about three decades. Prior to the current position, he has handled commodity and currency risk management, corporate treasury, mergers and acquisitions, strategic planning, business finance, and investor relations. He is currently the member of XCOM at Hindalco. He is also the Vice President of Aluminium Association of India and also member of various committees. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Anil Matthew. So, uh, good afternoon everyone. So, by the time my presentation comes up, uh, we heard a, uh, a panel discussion here. In derivative world, when complexity came in, how the risk managers failed because we did not have a risk management for the risk managers. Uh, I was also on the trading desk at that point of time, and um, banks had approached me. But before I took this job, my CEO told me two things. One is, you are a risk manager, your job is to protect. If you make money, you don't get extra bonus. That was the first thing. <laughs> Second thing, what he told me was that, please don't do what you don't understand. Simple. So that's what I did. The bankers came, tried to explain to me the animal. I told, explained completely. They explained the tail, they explained the trunk, but it came to the, when it came to the body, couldn't explain, so I decided not to do it. So, so I'm going to talk about uh, in a complex, in a derivative world when complexity comes in, what can go wrong. I'm going to talk about in the whole world if complexity comes in, what can go wrong. So my subject is enterprise risk management. So it is not just smaller, it's a much wider risk management. So when you talk about risk, typically, we tend to think about the threat part of it. So, Anybody who is doing business, or if you want to do business, it's all about taking risk. Without taking risk, we cannot make money, and if anybody can suggest something, I'll be able to, I will be happy to get into that. So without risk, no money. But then, when you take risk, you also should know that what risk are you taking. But when I'm talking about the enterprise risk management here, there are two sides to it. One is the threat part of it, and also the opportunity part of it. So when we talk about enterprise risk management, we ask, what are the threats to your business? That is the first question. Three questions. Anything before you do, check up what can go wrong, how can it go wrong, and why should it go wrong. If you can get an answer for that, your first job is taken care of. On the other side, looking at opportunities, what we are looking at is, am I taking enough risk to, to deliver the results of the company? So in enterprise risk management, we look at two sides, the threat part of it and the opportunity part of it. Now. Uh, we, we used to hear the word risk management, risk management over a period of time. If you see here, the risk management had been there in existence, but again, you see how it changed over a period of time. Um, insurance had been there a part of the businesses in earlier days. Financial risk had been a part of uh, the business earlier days. You had receivable or credit risk management. You had um, uh, uh, liquidity risk management, commodity currency or price risk management. All had been there. Slowly, uh, we moved into giving a lot more importance to customers, suppliers, risk management. Uh, the people became a focus, talent became a focus. And finally, today when you look at it, uh, anything, everything what you touch in an organization is all about risk what you're talking. For example, let me tell you, um, take, a, take social media. Maybe a couple of years, social media was not there. Reputation. Today, if anything happens, whether right or wrong, the message goes across the world in no time. That is the biggest risk we are facing. Like in my organization, communication reports to me, we already have a holding statement ready. Any incident happens, what is that you should communicate first? Earlier days, it was not there. It used to come in newspaper. Few of the, uh, few of the news channels may bring it, may not bring it. So the world has changed over a period of time. So anything in business, what you touch, there is risk. So that is where the enterprise risk management becomes important. So why, why enterprise risk management? We heard about the complexity. We used to hear the word VUCA, volatility, uh, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity. The world has actually become VUCA. If you, if you, I've just tried to give you examples there. The world is changing. And what you have seen is the pace of change is much faster than what had been. What had been changing over a period of time, there's no doubt about it. 
but now the pace of change is much faster. Uh, the, there are disruptive ideas coming up. There are new business model. If you see pre-COVID and post-COVID, there are a lot of new businesses which came up. There are a lot of new all, old businesses which died. So if you look at it, things change. Technology has become the center stage. ESG has become, become the center stage. Um, I talked about global reach. Activism has become much more, whether it is uh, media activism or whether it is shareholder activism or ESG activism. So the world which we are working has become much more complex over a period of time. That is where you need uh, risk management. So I was just sitting and writing down the world around us in last two years. So I'd been on the commodity currency hedging this since 2007. For then from there I moved into enterprise risk management. When I was looking at what are the risks which played out around us in last two years? I have not, I don't remember, we had so many risks. Started with COVID, then we had a major supply chain disruption which happened, the, uh, the geopolitical issues, Ukraine-Taiwan issue which happened, Taiwan has not come up, but Ukraine issue, uh, inflation, energy crisis, um, talent, the great resignation we talked about, um, impact of climate change we are seeing. So, host of things which you have come up and, uh, and I can tell you the CEOs and the, and, and, and the CXOs are busy handling this risk. So, coming to the objective of um, enterprise risk management, as I said, without risk, no business. Now, what we are trying to do here is optimize the risk. So, neither ignore risk because if you ignore risk, you don't know when it will come and hit you. But don't try to eliminate risk. If you eliminate risk, your risk reward ratio come down. So what, what, what the whole purpose of business is optimize risk. How do you do it? You have a risk appetite. You may be in the same business, but your risk appetite may not be, like for example, um, I am a company which makes 100 crores profit. Um, I got another, there is another competitor who makes 200 crores profit. But my debt debitor is three times, whereas the other company's debt debitor is 10 times. Definitely, my risk, even though I make lesser profit, from a risk appetite perspective, my risk appetite is much better than the other company. So what you need to do is optimize risk based on the risk appetite of the company. That's what we are trying to do. Also, let me point out here, if you have a proper risk management in place, if you have a proper risk management in place, that will actually help you to take more risk. For example, if you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're driving on a highway, if your car has got a very powerful headlight, you can see way, way ahead and you can drive much faster. Whereas if you've got a, not a very powerful right, a dim light, you'll be driving very slowly. So a good risk management, a good enterprise risk management in the organization actually help you to take more risk. So talking about what is the what is the purpose of enterprise risk management? So when we talk about enterprise risk management, we basically talk about a three type of risk. One is the known known risk. The first known is I know about the risk. The first known is I know about the risk. And the second known is I know how to mitigate that risk. So a risk which is known to you and a risk which you know the mitigation plan is called known known risk. The second one is known unknown risk. I know about a particular risk but I don't really know what should I do to mitigate that risk. I need to wait for things to go wrong and wait for a crisis management. And the third one is most difficult, which we had seen recently with COVID and things like that, the unknown unknown risk. Neither I know about the risk, nor I know, if you don't know the risk, you don't know the mitigation plan also. So typically what happens is in enterprise risk management, we work on the unknown unknown part of it. See, it is not, it is, it is unknown to you. But if you do some extra amount of, like for example, if you do a scenario analysis of your organizational business, you may be able to identify many more risks which you felt it was unknown to you. So the whole purpose of risk management is reduce the unknown unknowns, reduce the known unknowns, make it known known, and if possible, mitigate the risk and put it in the green category. That is the whole purpose of the enterprise wide risk management. So what are the aspects of risk management? The first part is identifying the risk. Uh, how significant is the risk for you? And do you have a owner for your risk? That is very important. There could be many risks in the organization. If you, there is no owner, I don't know who is going to handle that risk. Similarly, once you know your risk, do you have a proper mitigation plan? How effective is your mitigation? And also an owner for the mitigation plan because this cannot be left to anybody. And finally, you, keep, you should keep reviewing the risk because 
the risk profile of the company changes very frequently. Because I was, yesterday, uh, last week I was making a presentation. I was looking at uh, the World Economic Forum risk in 2010 and the World Economic Forum risk in 2022. I was saying in 2021, it was just the post uh, global financial crisis. It was all economic factors. Hardly there was one geopolitical factor. Today, when you look at it, the eight out of 10 factors are ESG related factors. See, in 12 years time, the global risk itself has changed focus from economic factors to, for, to ESG factors. That is, that is how. So you need to keep on reviewing the risk profile of the company and then work on that. So typically what happens is when you, when you yeah, typically what happens is when you, when you want to uh, do a very structured uh, way of risk management, it is good to have a proper process in place. So, so typically what happens is to do a risk management, the first stage is you need to acknowledge the factor that there is a risk in the organization. If you don't acknowledge there is a risk in the organization, you can't manage your risk. Once you acknowledge, yeah, there are risks in the organization, you need to first identify the risk. So there are different ways of identifying the risk. You go and talk to the operating managers who had been there in the organization for many years. They might have seen a couple of cycles in the organization. They will tell you they, through their lifetime what all risk you have seen. You've got other industries which you can look at. Um, you can do a scenario analysis. So there are different ways of identifying the risk. Now, once you, once you identify the risk, See, there are there are there will be thousands of risks you might have identified when you went through the exercise of identifying the risk. Once you identify the risk, you need to assess the risk. So when you talk about typically assessing the risk, there are basically two things people look at. One is what is the probability of this risk hitting you? That is the first thing. And second one is if the risk hit you, what is the impact of that? So the probability into the 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 the, the financial impact or any other impact is is the second part we should look at. Now, once we know what is the net impact of a risk hitting you, the third stage is you need to prioritize your risk because um, your, your CEO, actually your CEO is, a, is the biggest risk manager. The CEO will not have time to look at thousands of risks in your risk register. You need to find out what are the top 10 risks of the company and that is where the CEO or the CXO should be focusing on. So once you, once you prioritize the risk, what you need to do is, so when you prioritize, the top 10 goes to the CEO, the second 10 goes to maybe the, the, the chief operating officer, then you've got a top 10 financial risk which can go to the CFO, then you've got operating manager. So in our organization, we have got all the way going to the departmental head. So everybody has got 10, 10, 10 risk, which you're, so you can imagine it is cascaded down and a lot more risk are, 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 are tracked. Now once you identify these risk and the risk owners, what is required is uh, you need to have a mitigation plan. You, how do you mitigate it? And once you have a mitigation plan in place, some mitigations will be very, very expensive. So you decide not to mitigate it. You create a good crisis management structure to handle that. But there are a lot of risks which can be mitigated within your financial capability. So mitigate that, treat it, and take, your, take out uh, from your risk register. And that is where we call the residual risk. After mitigation, whatever risk is left over in the organization, that is called residual risk. That is what we'll be watching very closely. You need to monitor it very, uh, monitor it re very regularly. First, as I said, from a risk profile perspective, whether your risk profile has changed. From second perspective is keep on stress testing to your mitigation plans. Your mitigation plan, which was effective today, uh, may not be effective tomorrow. So look for that. And uh, then comes into the, mo the reporting part of it because without reporting, without visibility, you will not be able to act on it. So, so finally, the, 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 the process what I talked about, I call it as a tool for risk management. How do you use the tool for better performance? You need to integrate this tool with your operational performance. So the first one is integrate ERM with your performance review, integrate ERM with your strategy. Find out what are the risks to your strategy. That is the first part of it. The second part is build a risk aware culture. And when, when I talk about risk aware culture, it is not for your organization, even for your personal life. If you are aware what are the risks which can come and hit you, it will be really beneficial. So in my organization, what we always tell people is that uh, whenever you do something, three, ask three questions, what can go wrong, how can it go wrong, and why should it go wrong? And look through a risk lens. That is what, that is what we suggest. So uh, I'm skipping this, who is the risk manager? Um, as I said, 
everybody is a risk manager. If I'm in a manufacturing organization, I don't go to the shop floor and put it. I'm in an alu aluminum making organization. I don't go and produce aluminum. What I do is that I need to ensure that aluminum is produced within the cost, within the efficiency. So, so that is my role. So all of us in the organization are risk managers one way or other. Um, before I conclude, is this mandatory or is it optional? Yes, for some set of people it is optional, but some corporates it is mandatory. Um, you got the Companies Act, I'm not getting into details of it. Companies Act talk about risk management. Um, SEBI LODR talks about risk management. The top 1,000 market cap companies are supposed to have a separate uh, board committee for looking at uh, enterprise risk management. And uh, before I conclude, I always say that um, enterprise risk management is a, is, a, is a performance enhancer. Whatever we do in the organization, we are paid salary for that. If, I, if I, my activity doesn't add value to the organization, it doesn't make any sense. So it gives early warning system. That, didn't, that means it gets, give you time to prepare before something come and hit you. Uh, less surprises means lesser crisis management, lesser stress. Improve profits. If you mitigate your risk on time, your performance will be better. Your profitability will improve. Protect or improve cash. For example, if you do a project risk management, if you complete the project on time and within the cost, it will save cash. So you save cash there. Enhances brand equity. Look at the ESG risk. What, what, what sort of a brand equity you're getting by taking care of the ESG risk? Uh, whether it is um, credit rating, whether it is share price, liquidity, funding cost, all those things will be, will be within, within your reach. And uh, it will attract customers, suppliers, and even very soon, talent also will get attracted only companies which practices risk management. So I'm, I'm not taking, so I think I'm, I'm short of time, so, so let me, let me con con conclude with last statement. Manage your risk wisely or you have to manage a crisis. And crises will be very expensive, painful, time-taking. So it's good to have a risk management system. And um, before you, before I close it, um, I had been using a logo there. Uh, it is called, so I work for Hindalco, but I used a separate different logo there. There's an organization called RM Next. We are about 150 odd chief risk officers and enterprise risk managers in the country. It's an informal organization. We learn from each other, and uh, this is free of cost. Um, some of the founders of this organization. Maulik is a part of it. Maulik is one of the earlier. So Maulik, while he advises you on risk management, he also come to our society to learn what is an enterprise risk management. And uh, you, anybody want to understand more about it or if you're, if you're chief risk officer or somebody want to be a part of this community, you can connect with Maulik and um, he will help you to get in there. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Matthew. I'd like to invite on stage Mr. Sunil Vishwakarma from SR Capital to please present the memento to Mr. Anil, Anil Matthew. Mr. Vishwakarma. I'd like to call upon stage Mr. Malik Shah, please. Thank you, sir. Louder round of applause, ladies and gentlemen.